start. Hey everyone, uh, welcome to our uh, podcast, which is uh, which is uh, a monthly podcast that we conduct for organizations to know about Clific. Uh, if they have, um, if they if they already know about you know WhatsApp uh, and they want to leverage WhatsApp uh, to communicate well with their organizations. Uh, with their end beneficiaries, WhatsApp chatbot can uh, be a solution that they can explore. So this is more of an exploratory call. Um, we'll run you through how chatbot works through the conversation. Uh, throughout this uh, presentation, we'll also run you through some of the case studies and how organizations have been using uh, WhatsApp chatbot. So that's that's majorly the agenda of it. Before I, uh, you know. Um, jump into talking more about uh, Glyphic and about WhatsApp. I request all of you, if you can just uh, take a minute and uh, put down in the chat box uh, from where are you joining currently and to which organ I mean, with which organization you are currently working with. So that would be great. Thank you, Shriek. Thank you, Tejeshwar. Thank you, Sajita. Thanks, Aditya. Thanks, Arushi. Okay, all right. Thank you so much for uh, putting down uh, the putting down uh, the details over chat. Um, you can use the chat window to ask questions if you have. Uh, I will during the uh, during this webinar, I'll pause in between and I'll give you that space to ask those questions as well. So that's how uh, we're gonna go about this session. I am just going to start sharing my screen and uh, yeah, just a second. Okay, okay. So um, this is um, uh, this webinar is particularly on on Glyphic, and throughout this time we will explore a couple of use cases. Those people, the, the people who are joining in now, just want to reiterate the uh, this again. So we're going to talk about how you can use how you can leverage WhatsApp to communicate well with your uh, end users and how can you put your program to scale through WhatsApp? So that's what majorly the agenda is. Um, we'll start with a case study. We'll start with a, um, a, an, a success story, on-ground story of an organization that has uh, implemented WhatsApp. Uh, that would uh, help you to also visualize how this tool can be leveraged uh, for your program, okay? Um, yeah, so we'll talk, we'll start with our case study. So. For that, we have uh, we'll be talking about Digital Green. So, Digital Green is an is an organization that primarily works with smallholder farmers, and what they do is they leverage technology and they uh, leverage grassroots uh, uh, level partnerships. So, they throughout their programs they have been it's it's a large scale organization, and uh, they have their uh, they have their operations globally. And what they're trying to do is they're basically trying to leverage WhatsApp to uh, communicate well with their farmers so that they're able, also able to take care of uh, their uh, needs and share information that is related to these farmers at scale. So that is what uh, Digital Green is, is currently doing. So they are, now the, the idea uh, they wanted to explore was, can they provide farming advisory to uh, these farmers through chatbot. And uh, these, these farmers are basically 
are in remote areas in India uh, and they wanted to yeah so we're recording the session yeah so uh they these farmers are basically um they are uh, on ground so they wanted to share personalized information to all farmers so each farmer need is different and they wanted to understand what can be best to so that we're able to share the relevant information to each of these farmer there were a couple of key problems that they were facing before um you know they thought of moving into a technology solution the first one was lack of timely access to personalized information now what was happening in digital greens case was they were uh, they, they were community resource people community uh, people who were directly training these farmers if they wanted to get any information from these these crps there was a gap they were not able to receive that sort of information in a timely manner and they had to like wait for a couple of days to receive that sort of inf information or they have to wait for a training which usually happens on ground so there was no way for them to receive information which is more personalized for them and uh, also get it on time the other one was uh, they were facing uh, the, the farmers had low end devices they uh, wanted they all they were also like speaking local regional dialects regional languages so they wanted a solution that can help them bridge that gap and also not cost a lot of like you know upgrade on phones or like uh, space on phone so that uh, some uh, so that they any whatever a farmer is comfortable with something that goes well with their current state and so there was a lot of like push from the organization with respect to like hey do this on the ground do that on the ground there's a lot of like training and things were happening on ground but there was no channel for them also to understand what's happening with the farmer and there was no two way communication that was uh, that was something that were uh, that was missing in their in their program they also wanted to understand whether the information that we have shared with these farmers is it is it relevant or not so these are like majorly three key problems and through whatsapp chatbot now they wanted to solve these three problems basically how now how can they share this personalized advisory at scale with thousands of farmers now how can they share the information the most um, you know uh, at the time when the farmer needs it basically bridging the time gap and the third one is also understanding how can they get feedback from the ground on whether the program that we are running is relevant or not for them so that is how uh, digital green was trying to solve uh, th this is what exactly they wanted to solve through the through their whatsapp now in order to solve this they launched a chatbot and this chatbot basically was uh, this particular in this particular case study this is particularly particularly for chili farmers now the idea was they wanted to share personalized advisory uh, personalized advisory means information that's most relevant to the farmer depending on where their crop is at that particular point in time now every uh, farmer would have a crop depending on a particular crop calendar uh, in this month a farmer would have a crop uh, the growth of a crop in, in a particular particular month and they would you know they, they would have have like a longer crop calendar and they would want to send information which is relevant to that farmer basis the crop calendar so through the chatbot in couple of screenshots you would see they're trying to first understand what is the stage of the farmer i mean what is the information uh, where is the farmer right now so that they wanted to make it more personalized that's what is happening uh, in the first asking relevant questions asking the questions which will help them map them to a particular um, you know particular particular stage of the crop and then they will share the crop advisory with them sorry the next thing that they would they were doing with uh, the bot was uh, that they're doing with the bot is they share a lot of weather advisory now weather advisory now these farmers for them understanding what's the current weather like and how is it going to pan out in next 10 days 15 days is very important so that they can plan their uh, things uh, on the fields better so what what they were doing is they were not just pushing it 
to the farmers to all the farmers at once saying uh, they would ask the farmer hey are you interested in receiving this sort of information for your farm so now basically they're trying to enable choice with those farmers and they're asking uh, and they're asking basically um, to to share the inform uh, to to ask they were basically asking the farmers to share if they're interested in receiving that advisory and then they would ask them then the next step was basically they would then share a demo video on how can you use uh, how can you uh, you know enable location sharing from your whatsapp and the third one was then they will keep getting information on weather advisory so the idea was not only just to push content but also to understand whether this is something that the farmer would be interested in so that is uh, another thing which they did, they did and the last two things which they did was uh, one is uh, checking adoption assessment so with adoption assessment now every day basis crop calendar every day or every week they these farmers will receive a practice like hey do this your crop is uh, is at this stage you you implement this practice on your farm to improve the um, improve the uh, crop so now once they've shared that practice they also wanted to understand whether this is relevant for them or not or are they willing to adopt this recommended practice or not so by the end of the day they would share another message hey did you find this useful or not and uh, they would go about checking the effectiveness of the content that's being shared so that's uh, another way to you know improve their programs and understand whether this is relevant or not so that is what they have been doing and the last is basically they would also collect a lot of demography data in terms of uh, age gender mandal and uh, this just for like reporting purposes just to understand the understand where is this farmer located so that they are also like able to connect with them uh, for their in person trainings as well so that is how um, this uh, organization has been uh, you know using whatsapp i will uh, so i will also like just quickly share you how their uh, data dashboard looks like because that would uh, just uh, complete the picture okay uh, okay so this is so now whatever data that was there on the chatbot they wanted to visualize it and they wanted to see the impact they wanted to clearly understand where is my bot and to how many contact to how many farmers it's actually uh, you know sharing that sort of relevant information so now this is a dashboard data dashboard which they have created and yeah i'll just run you there are some numbers on the top which uh, talks about farmers opted for automated advisory uh, farmer shared complete details so farmers enrolled for push chili the the chili farming bot that we were talking about this is especially for that then they also have a bot for paddy so they are running multiple bots currently and that's how they would you know eventually see day wise daily messages exchanged daily contacts reached how many contacts they have reached uh in a in a month's time and yeah so that's how their their basic data data studio report uh looks like okay sorry just a second okay uh throughout the process they were also asking farmers to share pictures from the ground uh and they wanted to track how is the crop doing in that particular region so that they can also send it to the crps in that uh you know uh, in that region so they were asking farmers to click pictures and share um impact on ground so that's how uh the these are the these are actual pictures from the ground which uh, these farmers have shared okay uh, so yeah so that was on the digital greens uh, case study um, i'll just uh, just to complete this loop i mean what we have seen is basically organizations and ngos are trying to scale faster trying to implement technology in 
in use technology as an enabler to scale faster and they also wanted to connect stay connected to all their end users one on one so uh, and make it and make sure that the information that they're sharing is most relevant is is relevant to that person who's going to receive that information so that's what they're doing they're also looking at something that can save time energy and cost in in digital greens case they were having in person trainings which were uh, effective for people who were joining in but those who could not join they were they were realizing that it was not an effective way they needed a hybrid sort of a model where in person training can be implemented with a chatbot where uh, training after training chatbot can help them in uh, you know staying them uh, on their toes with respect to the things that they wanted to implement on the ground so that's that's that that's another thing and they also wanted to like eventually the idea is to track program and also track engagement so that's that's where uh, glyphic uh, comes into picture so glyphic is basically a chatbot platform provi provider so we'll provide you with the platform uh, whatever program you have we help you use chatbot to um, reach so reach uh, end beneficiaries at scale. So that's what Glyphic, Glyphic does. So Glyphic is an open source digital communication platform. We're currently working with 80 plus uh, NGOs uh, right now. That's not nice. So a uh, couple of uh, ways in which uh, NGOs are using Glyphic. Um, we have seen that in Digital Greens case, they're sending personalized content uh, to all these farmers. You can also use it to run your education program. So consider this as something which is uh, not only send, send, uh, not only agri-centric, but something that can be implemented wherever you want to. Uh, if you want to, you know, run your education program, health awareness drives, or send weekly reminders, if you want to automate FAQs. Now, there are a lot of questions which in general on uh, end beneficiaries or people on ground keep asking an NGO. If you have a list of those questions, you can just automate those questions and put it on a chatbot so that the person who is who is asking that question receives that information on time. You can also use it to conduct training for teachers, field staff, and also gather feedback and track and manage user, user data. Yeah, so this is, yeah, basically whenever, wherever you see a scope of digitally interacting with your users and want to happen at scale, you can use Glyphic. Okay. Um, this is one of the most asked questions uh, uh, that I that I hear. Uh, what, what is the right time to implement Glyphic and is Glyphic right for you? Uh, <laughs> we say like if you already are, you already have a well-established program on ground, you are currently working with uh, uh, close to four, at least with 400, 500 people on ground and you plan to scale and go beyond that. And you see that there is a need to automate things instead of one person like, or, you know, doing that task repeatedly, then Glyphic Chatbot is definitely something that you can explore. You also see that sharing one-on-one -on -one is important versus like a sharing on a group setting. So that's another thing you can think about Glyphic then. You also, on a monthly basis, if you have programs which are high touch, by high touch, I mean you are regularly talking to people on ground, you're sharing resources, you're also asking them to, you know, uh, share back information. And there is a lot of, uh, you know, communication happening on ground on a monthly, monthly basis, then definitely this is something which you can think about. And we definitely need someone, um, if you already have on the team, someone who can, you know, handle the platform and handle the uh, handle the uh, responsibility of leading the chatbot. So, yeah. So, basically, that is, that is what, um, that is, that is how we say, like, it's, it's right for you to use Glyphic. Okay. I'll just uh, pause here for a bit. Um, just wanted to understand if anyone has any questions so far. Anyone wants to unmute and ask?
Hello, Sneha. This is Aditya from my section. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, I mean, for so, uh, what is the time and cost uh, involved in this? I mean, by volume of chats. Uh, time, as in time to implement Glyphic, is that what you mean? Yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, with respect to time, uh, there are a couple of things I want to say. The first one is when you're setting it up. So there are there are certain things that we that would we would need for you to run your chatbot. One is, uh, you need to have a phone number in place that you would use to run your chatbot. The other is the Facebook Business Manager verification which is basically Facebook is trying to verify that this is an organization that can use Facebook, uh, that can use WhatsApp to communicate at large. So these two processes generally take, take between two to four weeks of time. And once you have these two things ready, we will set up your platform in a day's time. So in the beginning, you can say it takes between two to four weeks. Um, then a date for you to you know go over the platform will help you with onboarding uh but yeah by the end of i would say at least in the beginning a month's time you can keep then for you to you know if you already have some idea on what exactly you want to do on the ground uh, on the platform it would take at least a month and a half time to design a pilot that you can do with your users so that's how time, uh, that's how uh, initial months look like. And then eventually, depending on how do you want to like, you know, improvise on the conversation, uh, iterate the program and make it better and more relevant. That's like a iterative process and it would eventually take more time. So that's how the timeline looks like. With respect to, uh, with respect to pricing, the pricing consists of three different elements. One is the uh, monthly subscription cost of Glyphic, which is uh, which starts at seventy five hundred per month, and then there's there, there is a one time setup fee for uh, where we will set up your accounts. We'll do the onboarding. That uh, that is a, that is fifteen thousand. The third element is the WhatsApp fee. So now all these messages are exchanged on WhatsApp WhatsApp's uh, platform. Now, whatever messages are being exchanged are uh, they come at a cost. I will share that uh, over the um, over the chat window. So these are basically the three elements of uh, pricing. Okay, and uh, where the where is the data stored? If we have our own, let's say we have our own AWS platform or Azure or any VPS, so can it connect to our existing databases? Uh, that I have to check, Aditya. I don't have that information. But yeah, generally, the data is stored in BigQuery. Uh, we generally ask organizations to set up uh, Google Cloud storage. BigQuery and, on Google yeah. Cloud. Yeah, Google Cloud so, and BigQuery. So then there would be additional cost of uh, BigQuery platform? Yes, there's an additional cost. Okay. Yeah. And if uh, rather than like we have... Uh, Microsoft subscription, uh, which allows okay. us some credits on Azure. So, uh, I mean, uh, is that compatible? Uh, is this what Glyphic works on? I mean, is open to? I have to check. I have to check. But so far, we have been working on this only. But uh, yeah, I have to check with respect to that. Okay. And so this is one part. So you, uh, I mean, so right now, if we have our own MISs, I mean, you need to check whether we can connect with your MISs. I mean, the direct, the data from this can directly go to the, our MISs, right? So are you saying data from your platform to go on Glyphic? Is that what you're talking about? So let's about? say if I run a survey. Okay. Okay. I run a field survey, similar question. So okay. we ask, so rather than the data going to uh the gcp where we have our own mises with where there is already some data so it's like this additional data integrates there so we have a java and mysql based platform our own mis and we want to want to kind of extend it to uh, extend it for certain things let's say the attendance of children daily attendance how many children are present only that number 
in a given school. So we want this number to go to our MIA so that it can integrate with other data that we already have. <laughs> got it. Got it. I have to check, Aditya. I will check with my team and let you know. Um, but uh, as of now, I think this is this is doable. But I have to like, I have to be sure. And you mentioned monthly subscription of seven thousand five hundred. Yes. And uh, I mean, and this is in addition to the Google Cloud platform. Yes. Yes. Okay. So, what are the key like elements of this seven thousand five hundred? What are the services? It's the platform fee. Uh, basically, you will be using. Uh, this is a WhatsApp. Uh, this is a web web based platform. So, in order to in order for you to have the access to the platform, this is the platform access fee. Okay. Uh, hey, Arushi, do you want to go next? Hey, yeah. Uh, hi, Sneha. So uh, my question is actually very simple, but I would still ask. Uh, so I'm currently working at Hagdarshak. It's a for-profit uh, social enterprise. So um, I saw one of the slides where you said that it is uh, for NGOs uh, who are catering to around five, more than 500 people. I uh, just wanted to ask if, uh, you know, a form like Hagdarshak is going to uh, fall um, into the category where, where Glyphic can be of any help. And um, because because we happen to deal in the social impact sector, but uh, we are a for-profit organization. So wanted to ask that that's number one. Uh, the second question that I have for you is... Um, uh, regarding the integration so um say for example uh we want uh you know some sort of integration between our uh, uh, our customer application uh say for instance uh, our customer application and uh, and say this whatsapp bot or the the platform that the bot that we are creating so just wanted to ask if that is possible uh, that this sort of integration where the user is actually using the uh, Hagdarshak application but can uh, reach to the WhatsApp bot for all the other information. So yeah, the, these were my two questions. Sure. Thank you. I'll answer the second one first. Um, it is possible. So if you're already using an, uh, uh, if your users are already ex using an existing app through uh, integrating Glyphix API, they're available uh, and through Glyphix API, you can connect it to your platform. Now, however you want to use Glyphic in addition to your app, you can use it. Now, if through the app, you want to like send nudges to people to complete courses, or if you want to send reminders to people on their WhatsApp, is something which you can do uh, when you integrate Glyphic to your app. So that is something which is which is possible. Sure. Uh Thanks. Sorry, Ayushi. Uh, Arushi, can you just repeat the first one? I'm sorry. Hello. Uh, am I audible? Yes, I can hear you. Hello. Yeah, I can hear you, Arushi. Can you hear me? Hey, uh, Anuradha, do you want to um, go next? I will just answer Arushi's question when she's back. Yeah, sure. Um, so, uh, Sneha, I have two questions. First, you mentioned trainings, uh, that trainings can be conducted on this platform. So, could you share with me how is that possible? Is it a two-way communication? It's, is it video or oblique audio or only text? Just want to understand because our program in the livelihood space, we have ongoing skill-based trainings which have to be disseminated across the state into various, uh, you know, at uh, small district and all that levels. So this would be very important for me and I'd like to know how is that possible? That's my okay. first question. Then okay. The next one. Okay, so um, with respect to training, if you, let's suppose, depending on how do you want to train them, if you have video content, if you have audio content, or if you have uh, images that are part of your part of your training, you can you know use WhatsApp to WhatsApp chatbot to put that content on the bot, and then you can have like an assessment of sorts or put or some questions uh, with respect to the content that you have shared. 
So that way you will be able to understand whether the content that I've shared is relevant, uh, sorry, is uh, uh, whatever content you have shared, you can actually see how are people performing on that uh, particular video or the particular content that you have shared. So that is possible. So, so my question is, so on the, on the Glyphic platform, if say a receiver of the training wants to pose a question back in real time, that, that communication is possible, right? Yes, that is possible. Now, see, if that the two things. Now, if this is an auto, right now, a WhatsApp chatbot is basically automated. Whatever right. questions you already have in your predefined menu, you huh. would basically implement that training, right? I mean, or implement that sort of a flow, chat flow. Right. right. But if someone asks questions, question which is different than your predefined menu, what happens in that case is that person might um e either the bot responds hey we will get back to you in let's suppose 24 hours time okay uh and that question then can be redirected to any of your team members and that person can answer that question for uh to 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 this person basically the one who's asking that question that's one way the other way is basically with with our with the chat gpt integration uh automating large scale faqs is possible now now if these questions are not part of your uh, the, the the part of your rule based model or part of your uh, predefined menu you can still ask the bot to answer those questions based uh, basis on all the questions which you have re received so far you can create a knowledge bank of sorts and then through that you can connect your uh, chatbot for the uh, for, uh, for to answer that particular question so these are like basically two ways in which you can respond back to a user who is uh, asking questions which are not part of the predefined menu okay i'm sorry but i still have one doubt which is yeah, yeah i hear what you're saying so this uh, training being disseminated uh, there is no real live trainer online right but suppose all the questions are aggregated and uh, is a two way communication on a real time between a real uh, that is also some, yeah. some, some stage may not be able to answer a question and then it has to pass it on to the real real you know the live trainer on one hand is that communication also possible yeah that is possible yeah, that's that is I possible mean. okay my second question uh, Sneha, is is this pricing the monthly platform fee independent of volume the number of um, users yeah it's uh, uh so basically this pricing i'll just share this with so everyone here just a second um yeah okay um with respect to pricing now if you're talking about um it's there is there are three elements like I told you right I mean uh the third one is dependent on the volume now third one is the WhatsApp fee so whatever conversation you are having on the chatbot is uh it comes at a price and those conversations whenever you increase the volume or decrease the volume these this basically the WhatsApp charges uh basically fluctuate up and down so that is how pricing works. Okay. 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 Yeah. And uh, so, how does this compare with, um, in terms of cost, with um, any other paid platforms available in the market today? Is it cheaper? So this is ma this is for uh, majorly for nonprofits. So the pricing is basically considering that nonprofits, uh, yeah, you know, yeah. uh, would definitely look for a cheaper solution. So right. the pricing is quite uh, you know low as compared to other uh, you know platform providers when it comes to you know pro providing whatsapp chatbot okay so has this been used for education in primary school education uh, uh, situations as well yeah yeah we yes. we do have lo i mean almost more than 40, 50% of our current ngos are in are education ngos so um, yeah, uh, they use it for multiple different purposes, training, on-ground, uh, um, you know, program implementation, directly with teachers. If you know about the apprentice project, 
they are also they're directly working with the uh, uh, children there's a uh, key education foundation so there are a lot of ngos that have been that are on glyphic and yet and are using it for education purposes lovely thank you very much dear uh sneha can i go ahead i think yeah yeah sorry uh arushi i was not able to hear uh, you and i yeah. and i lost track of your first question if you can yeah uh, so yeah so my question was actually uh, about uh, glyphic and whatever you discussed uh, for ngos uh, who are catering to more than 500 people i think i saw this written on one of the slides uh, i'm working at hug darshak and it's a for profit social enterprise so just wanted to ask uh, the scope of uh, you know of the services that that my firm uh, sure. can up so um we generally uh, arushi we generally work with non profits but even if a for profit wants to work it's up they can definitely use it there's no set criteria that will only work with non profits uh, if this sort of service uh, even a non profit even a for profit wants to work and they see that um, glyphic is a right fit for them depending on like you know scale uh, funding and other other things they can definitely use it so there's no um, i mean there's no boundary conditions there basically so oh, got it thank you thank you so much tanmaya you wanted to ask something yeah hi sima uh, so i had a question um, so when you using glyphic is it possible to work with whatsapp groups also or is it only a direct individual conversation it's direct individual conversation we're also look we're also thinking of automating group conversations uh too but as of now um one on one is something that we already you know um uh, we already provide group automation would also require like lot of like control uh, when it comes to you know handling those sort of queries and yeah. things like that on a group so we are yet to experiment that but that's some, something that's in the pipeline okay. but as of right now it's not possible it's right? not possible yeah it's just one on one okay okay nice that's was my sure thanks yeah tejeshwar yeah hi sneha um we are exploring uh, moving to whatsapp uh, from currently having whatsapp groups with our you know teachers for their training capacity building uh, but a question that is arising is since we're already on whatsapp how is uh, moving over to you know an automated chatbot going to be helpful so just wanted to understand you know what are some of the case studies and the benefits that uh, some of the ngos in education specifically doing teacher education or teacher capacity building able to you know find benefit in shifting from these whatsapp groups to you know one on one chatbot okay um couple of things one i mean i i actually wanted to ask you this question why are you first thinking about moving from group setting um just because uh, the people who are handling these whatsapp groups are getting inundated and really not able to handle the uh, the engagement on, on those groups and so you know when we're thinking of increasing the number of schools or increasing the number of teachers uh, uh, we'll need a lot more people to just manage these groups got it okay okay um so yeah i mean that's de that's definitely one of the pain points why organizations move from a group setting to a one on one setting now for these groups um when you are communicating on the groups a that person one or two people who are part of that group it becomes very difficult for them to have these sort of conversations uh, and to cater to all these people at uh, you know uh, cater to the needs of all these people at large becomes very difficult and asking those sort of like responding back to those questions uh, on the group now imagine the person has not asked those asked those questions he still he or she is still getting those uh, responses to those questions a in a good way it's great that they're also getting information but b they're also getting spam as well um so how can we make sure that it's relevant to that user the information or the question which they are asking so that's why that's one of the reason why um or uh, you can think of like implementing chatbot now how it works and how how it's different it's a one on one communication it's more like 
you and I are chatting on the chat uh, on, on WhatsApp. It's basically that. So whatever conversation you're now having on the group, you will have it one-on-one -on -one in person, but you will also like make that information relevant to that person. Uh, that's, that's, that's what, um, that, 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 that's one of the reasons. I mean, that's how it's basically different in both the, both the cases. Um, I will also, I will also just quickly share, uh, one other case study with you just a second yeah yeah and the resource persons who are responding from the glyphic platform they have to be on a laptop right they cannot do it from a mobile we um uh, they have to be on the laptop uh but we also have like launched a whatsapp uh sorry a, a glyphic mobile app right now so we're yet we're yet testing it out but then through that also you can you know respond to those messages through whatsapp also got it thank you sorry just a second just uh share this with all of you okay this is particularly for education based ngos the ngos that are looking at you know uh glyphic for their um uh, gl uh, looking at glyphic or whatsapp chatbot for their organization um this is antarang antarang basically works on providing career guidance to uh, school students and uh, young adults and what they're doing is basically they wanted uh, to you know give content to the students through uh, using whatsapp and also build exposure about different diverse career options uh, so that is what antarang wants to do and now through the bot exactly like what you have mentioned uh, tejeshwar they um they were through these whatsapp groups they felt like the person is not able to handle the information there was no scope to send personalized information on whatsapp and also they were also not able to track how many have engaged with that content that they have shared on the uh, on the group so they wanted to basically explore this and also wanted to share relevant piece of information so that's what they they did and now because they started the bot the idea was to send information about different uh, workshops or trainings that are happening which are more relevant to that person now someone wants to understand a uh, co content or training in put one particular career now they use these uh, the whatsapp they would first understand hey this person's interest is x now i will only share um, you know training videos or uh, upcoming training opportunity with this person only for this particular category so that's how they implemented it and they realized that the um, that this is working out well for them and they also saw like more engagement and more uh, you know workshop higher workshop attendance over time with respect to the training or the course that they have shared so yeah that's that's how they have been they have been doing um i'll also share the data dashboard with you so they've also been using data to track what is happening with respect to uh with respect to the uh, uh, the with respect to the bot and how the bot is basically being uh, you know adopted by these young adults so that's like an overall like like a uh, data dashboard on great yeah uh, would you be able to share some of these slides for specifically for these education case studies sure i can do that thank you okay um yeah any more questions i just wanted to ask sneha like when can we have this recording like for later reference uh just after this call i mean by today you'll get the recording oh great thank you okay um there are no questions i can also show you how the platform looks like um and that that is something which can help you see how the uh, how you are going to Im use Clific. Just a second.
Okay, so this is um, your platform and you will use your contact details to log in. So this is the main dashboard of Glyphic. Here is on your right panel, you will see all the chats, the chats of uh, different people who have interacted with your bot. So you'll see that list here. And once you click on any of those, you can, you know, scroll up and see the chat, the entire chat. So that is also something which you can see. Um, now, the, one of the questions that we, uh, I mean, I just heard was, can we respond, uh, you know, live, basically, when, when someone is asking a particular question? So... Now you can de you can ba basically you can definitely do that. Can you see these numbers here? Twenty four nine four. These are basically timers. So ti what do I mean by that? Any message that you are uh, you, uh, uh for one particular one particular what do I say a contact? There's a twenty four hour of active window. So you can during this window have a chat with that person any number of times. So that is something which you can do. But once this window closes, then you have to apply a template. Template messages are basically pre-approved messages that uh, you know uh, you have you 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 basically use to send out the information uh, to send out the uh, uh, you know relevant message to that person. Either that or a user initiates a conversation with you. So either of the two uh, would be used to initiate a conversation out of the 24 hour window. Okay. Then we'll go to flows. Flows is, this is the conversational, uh, conversation builder. This is where you're going to design the flow of the chat, how your flow is going to look like. It's a easy drag and drop system to, you know, help you design your conversation. Um, I just zoom in a bit. Yeah. Are you interested to know more? There are options of like buttons or use a list option so that your, <coughs> sorry, your user doesn't have to type. And it's uh, better to have that sort of like system in place when you're starting, uh, starting on Glyphic. So use these features. Uh, I There's also preview window. Preview window is basically, it helps you to uh, visualize how you're building the bot. So here, if you would see, what would you like to know? This is this is one of the messages uh, here. Yeah, I'm just trying to figure that out. Where is that? But yeah, it's one of the messages here. Uh, then there are options. What is a chatbot? How to create a chatbot? So this is this is the demo flow of Glyphics chatbot. You can find this on our website also. Uh, you can use this demo flow to understand how can how does a chatbot works. Okay, uh, this is this is exactly that. What is a chatbot? How to create? And then we have content. If a user selects what's a chatbot, then it will be taken in that particular direction. So that's how that's how uh, you will build your conversations. Um, there are also analytics available. I'll just share this. Yeah, there's also analytics available on the chatbot. These are basic analytics with respect to like how many daily contacts, daily conversation, most active hours. And yeah, just, this is just a very high level overview. But if you want anything beyond this, which is more tailored to your program or you want to see how many teachers have been trained this month, how many, you know, uh, people were from this particular region, that particular region or this particular school, right? And then in that case, you have to customize a Google Data Studio report. So that is something that happens. Yeah, let's just go back here. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Uh, there's also an option to manage your staff to control and give access to whoever you think is the most relevant person to, you know, handle the, either you want to give them the entire access or you just want to give them the chat section. Uh, that's also up to you. So that is something which you can control from here. Okay. Uh, we were talking about 
whatsapp uh, charges right and whatsapp fee you can see that uh, here at the bottom because we are working with gupshub gupshub is basically the whatsapp service provider they are directly working with meta and you if this balance runs low they will ask you hey please top up your uh, balance so that uh, you won't be able to send messages from the platform so this is one one way for you to check those okay yeah any questions on the platform i'll just pause for a bit um have you experimented integrating with chat gpt yeah we have we have recently done that um we're also doing it for a couple of more organization we've done with the uh, tap the apprentice project and uh, now there are seven eight ngos which are in you know um, in line to implement gpt is it completely open or is it contextualized to you know what the program is and what the context is it's actually contextualized uh, it's basically how you want to see it uh, now for a particular program especially i'll just take a take a minute to explain for tap uh, they want they teach social and emotional skills to students and they through their chatbot they were getting a lot of questions which were out of the scope of the chatbot and the chatbot they wanted the chatbot to still respond to those questions and this volume was this volume is, is really is really large they were handling queries of like 10 10k students type so what they did was for the, all these questions they designed a knowledge bank and through that knowledge bank they realized hey, if the question is this answer this sort of a, a send a response of this sort so they created a knowledge base based on their ideas and uh, based on their content and then they basically linked it to to the chatbot so that's how they have done it so it's okay more so it's not completely open it's only it's, it's pulling correct. the answers from the knowledge base correct that is correct and uh, language translation would also be part of it then uh as of now we are still experimenting with it um uh, english is the most preferred language as of now but uh, we are also like looking at translation in different languages as well got it thank you yeah anuradha yeah sneha uh, so uh, one i have heard gupshap i'm not very sure what it was if you can elaborate a little and my second question is Uh, so we are. Um, I'm wanting to know uh, other than English, like Marathi and um, Malayali. So we are since we are working in these areas. Is there any plan to make uh, communication available in regional languages or do a translation? Yeah, the translation is possible, Anuradha. Um, okay. So, like how I showed you the content in the content builder. If right. if I'll just uh, share that again. sorry yeah if i'll go to the content section here you would see can you see the languages which are available here actually it's too fine can you sorry, sorry. Able... oh okay i'm sorry yeah better okay, yeah, yeah i can see marathi bengali odia telugu malayalam kannada tamil okay great so, so these are these are you can uh, you know basically activate these or deactivate these from your back end uh, once you activate these what happens is basically what could you just zoom in for one minute again i'm just quickly making a note if you don't mind sure sure oh just a second i'm just struggling with the zoom in feature marathi oh, wait wait sorry just yeah okay okay got it yeah so yeah. um wha so whatever content you have you know made in english you you mm. need to use either like google translate or you need to use uh, something to translate these back into the regional language so basically mm. the content part is something that you have to like provide this platform okay uh, if it is bengali these are basically the idea uh to put these here is basically that these are the languages which are uh, sort of available for you to design your flows okay but you're saying the translation has to be done by us Correct. after that the bot Correct. has this uh, has these um, 
language is available for communication that is correct okay so you have to design because at times what happens is uh when you're just uh, when 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 you're asking a bot to translate they might not be able to translate it in the best possible way in Got the it. way in which the, the people on on ground would def, would want to hear it right i mean they would do definitely need some level of tweaking in that perspective so that is why the content is something that you can look at we're also in, uh, we're also integrating uh, with bhashni so that's like uh, that's uh, what i was i was going to ask you that only are you yeah you we've know? recently integrated with bhashni that's also an experiment that we have done recently uh, making the content from basically voice to voice and uh, uh, voice to text is something th uh, in local languages is something that we are exploring with bhashni through uh, glyphic glyphic and bhashni integration okay so uh, you know sneha just i'll take a minute more i just attended the oasis summit um, in bangalore and there was a discussion on uh, jugal bandi yeah and i just wanted to know that uh, your gupshap and jugal bandi what i don't know my anything about gupshap i do know a little bit about jugal bandi just two three days back so if you can just share with me what is gupshap and can it be of use to people like us so gupshap is nothing you know uh, nothing other than the whatsapp message provider so when you start your glyphic chatbot uh, you need a third party to give you enable those sort of messages on your platform so that sort of you know partnership we have done with gupshap now gupshap basically enables you to have that conversation on whatsapp so think about it as a as as a, as a as an organization or a or a or a or a or whatsapp service provider who is helping you send or receive messages through your chatbot actually i'm not very clear why do we need gupshap without gupshap hamara whatsapp se communication nahi chalega आपके पास अभी सिर्फ प्लेटफॉर्म है ठीक है अच्छा ये जो आपके पास जो आपने प्लेटफॉर्म डिजाइन किया है ये जो आपने फ्लोज बनाए हैं कॉन्वर्सेशन बनाई है बट एक्चुअली में अगर आप इसको व्हाट्सएप पे लेके ले जाएंगे राइट यू नीड अ प्लेटफॉर्म दैट कैन इनेबल दो कॉन्वर्सेशन ऑन व्हाट्सएप दैट्स हाउ इट वर्क सो वो बिना डायरेक्टली प्लेटफॉर्म प्लेटफॉर्म आपको मैसेज नहीं प्लेटफॉर्म से ही मैसेजेस जा रहे हैं बट यू जस्ट थिंक दिस इज एन ऑर्गेनाइजेशन विच इज हेल्पिंग यू नेबल दोज मैसेजेस ऑन व्हाट्सएप बेसिकली या मैसेजेस आर गोइंग थ्रू द प्लेटफॉर्म ओनली वी हैव डन एन इंटीग्रेशन विद गपशप टू बिकॉज वी आर नॉट अ पार्टनर विद मेटा दे आर अ पार्टनर विद मेटा सो एन ऑर्गेनाइजेशन दैट्स ऑलरेडी अ पार्टनर विद मेटा कैन ओनली प्रोवाइड यू मैसेजेस ऑन द चैट Okay, got it, got it. Yeah, uh, Anuradha. Uh, so, um, I think I am clear. Uh, just wanted to know, have you explored Jugal Bandi? It seems a very powerful two-way communication. On, uh, I mean, they've used it in legal areas and. intelligent responses and all of that so uh, yeah I we have, we have the 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 um, uh the with the tap i was talking about they, we have used jugal bandi's apis in in that okay. way so okay. yeah so we are working with jugal bandi in that way okay the another i forgot the name i thought i'll just share that also uh, have you seen jugal bandi's open ai's uh, chatbot that was uh, showcased uh, i was there in the jugal bandi demo where they showed how a, you know a woman in a from an economically backward situation is communicating on a legal matter and uh, getting a response or even applications being filed up legal application being filled up the bot asking them naam kya hai mobile number kya hai ye and then the application being filled and submitted to government platform so it seemed very powerful for uh, empowering uh, you know economically weaker section people who don't have the ability to access government uh, you know it's a data and fill up and or even small things like filling a filing a legal complaint even all of that was so it seems a very powerful uh, system for um, you know equipping 
um, as I said, you know, people who are not um, fully educated, strong, comfortable in all of that and aiding them in, you know, getting, you know, doing all of this. So yeah. that's my, just a brief look I had. Yeah, so, so Jugal Bandi is basically, the tech, uh, they're working with like open AI and they're, they're integrating, uh, using, um, they have a strong knowledge base that they have in place for do, for these people, for them to ask those particular questions and get those responses. Uh, they are using Glyphic right now for, uh, you know, implementing, uh, for basically sending these messages all out. Uh, okay, so, great. Yeah. So they but are using Glyphic. They are using Glyphic. Uh, but the technology, which is like open AI and uh, things like that, they, they're they using Jugal Bandi's API. And the, we are basically working with Jugal Bandi in that perspective. Great. Yep. Um, am I audible? Yeah, Arushi. Yeah, sorry for just barging in like this. But uh, just wanted to ask Anuradha if she is speaking about Jagrit. Um, I think that's the platform that's providing all the legal, um, I think, assistance uh, with Jugal Bandi uh, API and everything. So just wanted to ask Anuradha, because this video which she's talking about, I, I think it's there on uh, uh, YouTube as well, where a woman is trying to uh, speak about domestic abuse and uh, getting an entire form filled, a legal form filled um, through through the platform. You may be right. Actually, I just attended this um, at the BIC last week, and so <laughs> much of data came coming. You know, I was like, uh, uh, too much of data coming in. So I may be wrong, wrong with the name, but I do remember the Jugal Bandi bit and Jagrit bhi ho sakta. I will check my notes. You may be right. Yeah, Jagrit is probably the name of uh, uh, this platform that's giving the legal uh, assistance to people. And uh, Jugal Bandi is apparently the uh, at the back end, as in at the back end, helping them out with it. So okay. because the the instance that you gave instantly took me to uh, this YouTube video, which was a very clear demonstration of of the same. So that's why. Yeah. Okay. Me, you may be right. I will check my notes. Um, I just had a brief recall. Thank you so much. Just going through my notes at the same time. Tanmaya, I wanted to ask. Yeah, Sneha. Uh, so a while ago, you had mentioned an organization that was uh, doing social and emotional skill training for kids uh, and was hand simultaneously handling 10,000 uh, 10, kids at a time. Uh, is it possible to have a case study on this uh, for me to go through? Sure. Um, I will just check. It would be there on our website, but uh, I'll find the relevant one and share. I missed the name of the organization. Uh, the Apprentice Project. The Apprentice Project. Okay. Okay. Yeah. If you can just uh, share this with me, because I am looking to scale to like a similar number. It would be really interesting for me to go through this. Sure. Thanks. That's it. So, Sia, will you be mailing this recording to all of us? Yeah, I will. I will do that. It will be really great. Wonderful. Thank you. No worries. Any more questions? I'm just going to share the link to our blogs here. It has uh, whatever new feature we launch or whatever new integration we do. Uh, it's it becomes part of our blogs. So you can, you know, refer to this whenever, you know, you want to know what's happening on Glyphic. You would also see one blog on Jugal Bandi, uh, sorry, on uh, Bhashni, Bhashni's uh, API, uh, Bhashni's integration. There's also, yeah, I'll just share this with you. There's also an interesting one. Tanmay, you have more questions? Sorry, I see that your hand is raised. No, no, no. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, any more questions? Else I'll uh, else we'll close the call.